Hello everybody, I'm so excited to be sharing today the modern way to scale a SaaS business. So this is gonna be a really uh, fun workshop. We got about 20, 25 minutes together where we're gonna go through what this looks like for your specific business and how you can really scale a lot faster the product-led way. So I am super excited to dig into this with you today. But before we do, let me just ask you a quick question. So when it comes to running your business, are you tired of the more traditional approach to scaling a SaaS business where you are um, basically handholding customers a lot when it comes to helping them get value out of your product or also when it comes to upgrading or hopping on sales calls just so that they can actually understand what the heck your product does. So the main way of growing a sales led business is typically through hiring more sales reps and it's, it's very expensive. But what I'm gonna be doing today is going through how you can really approach growing the product led way. And one thing before we dig into this is you're not alone. Like if that's you where you're tired of the traditional approach of scaling, um, what's really gonna be great about this presentation is you're gonna learn like this isn't just you. Is <laughs> And on average, three out of every four B2B buyers actually prefers to buy uh, or try before they buy. So this is gonna be really applicable to scaling the modern way, selling to the modern uh, consumer. However, when it comes to this, there is actually quite a few challenges that we're gonna dig into. So the first thing is that creating a try before you buy experience is actually very hard. There's a lot to it. You also have to consider a lot of different variables uh, to get this experience right. So on the surface, it just looks like, hey, like there's this free trial and freemium experience going on. Uh, but then when you start rolling it out, you realize, oh my goodness, there's so much more to this. Uh, becoming product led involves changing your pricing. It's, it is part of your company level strategy, onboarding, org structure, you name it. There's a lot of things that go on. And so most companies, I always refer to this as the product led iceberg. You hit it and some companies survive and then a lot of others need a lot of repairs. Um, and that's where we can come in um, and help them. But I wanna help you uh, the first time you ever roll out a product led motion become successful. And even if you, you hit that iceberg, uh, you're gonna still get a lot out of this because you're gonna realize, oh man, I could do things in a different way and not necessarily even work harder, but get those results way faster. And so I wanna share a little bit of my story um, because as it relates to this, um, it's not for the reasons you might think. So when it came to the very first free trial I launched over eight years ago at Vidyard, um, what actually happened is it bombed. <laughs> it just didn't work. And the only thing the sales team at Vidyard was talking about in relation to this free trial was cannibalization, <laughs> which isn't a good thing. So the free trial was actually cannibalizing and sinking this business more than it was helping it. So after a few short months, we actually canned that free trial. So luckily, about eight months later, we decided to launch a freemium product and this free product was a, a smashing success. We had over 100,000 users who downloaded it in less than 12 months, and it's been used by millions. So this one product changed everything for myself. It kind of opened up my eyes to, wow, there's this way of basically promoting and telling people what our product does and then there's this other way, which is showing people exactly what our product does. And that latter way is why I'm here, is because I totally believe that this approach to building a business isn't just better, it's what people want. And when you sell the product-led way, it doesn't feel like selling, it feels more like serving people. So since my time at Vidyard, I've helped hundreds of companies from small pre-revenue startups all the way up to Fortune 100 companies roll out a successful product-led motion. And collectively, I've helped companies increase their self-serve revenue by over a billion dollars, which is crazy to even think about. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and so that's why I'm here in front of you today. I want to basically 10X the number of product-led companies in the world, because I believe product-led companies will be the backbone to empowering anyone to do anything they want in the next decade. So here's what to expect when it comes to today's talk. 
Today, I'm going to share with you three things um, that will help you scale faster without actually working any harder. And so I'm going to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so I want you to follow along, take notes. This is going to be amazing. And but before we get into it, a little kind of warning before you learn this, you must be willing to unlearn uh, quite a few things. <laughs> so a lot of what I'm going to share with you is going to be at odds of what you've learned so far on your product led journey. So it goes against a lot of things product led gurus will tell you um, and it's going to be new. And so I really want you to kind of pay attention as far as how this will work in your business. And I'm going to give you some really good questions to kind of dig into as well to just think about and ponder. So a lot of this is going to make rolling out a product led motion so much easier for your business. And you're going to learn a new, simpler way to scale for your business. All right. So the very first thing I want to share with you is synergy is a precursor to scale. So what the heck do I, I actually mean by this? So I want to actually draw it out for you. So if you're following along with taking notes, uh, feel free to go through and follow along with exactly how I draw this because it's going to make it way more uh, applicable for your business, uh, just so you can understand how it all works. So you start with two circles. Um, and then the third thing is, yeah, kind of coming around here. Perfect. So my drawing is not the best. <laughs> so maybe pay more attention to what I, I say. So when it comes to synergy, um, it all starts with like, what is kind of the main uh, goal of everything? So if we look at the center, um, why we're here is we want to find a better way to scale. So that's kind of apparent. Um, but when it comes to creating synergy, there's basically three things that go on. Um, so the other thing is, if we are going to long term have synergy, we must be able to have a profitable business. So that's that's going to serve us well. We're going to be able to do like really cool things um, if we do that. And then the second thing we're going to be able to really have to do is once we have a profitable business, we need to also make sure um, that one day we have what's known as effortless customers, which also makes it easier for us to scale. And effortless customers are those ones who are like ideal customers for us. They're really easy. They just sign up, they get to value on their own, they upgrade on their own. They're, they're amazing. We love effortless customers here at Product Lead. And then the third thing uh, that you need in order to actually make this happen is called an empowering product. So that's kind of the, the core of creating synergy, but like, how do you actually do it? Um, it comes to answering a few questions. So profitable business, if we're going to answer that, it really comes down to answering what do you do best? So really think about that for your business. Um, effortless customers, this is really who do you serve best? So think about that as well. What does that look like for your specific business? And then the empowering product is really how do you create, I'll just call it for short, epic value. Something that blows people away, something that makes them share it with others because they're like, oh my goodness, have you seen what ChatGPT was able to do? It's so cool. There's so many things that I love about this product. So the goal here is, you want to align them all and that's the hardest part. So I'll share my, my personal story with my own business. So first year I focused on the profit. I just did this. I just took on a lot of different deals, but I didn't have the effortless customers. I had a ton of different kinds of customers. It was very hard to scale and it was frustrating. It didn't work out. <laughs> and then year two of the business, I focus more on who are the, the customers I actually love serving. Um, that's another thing. It's not always just who do you serve best is the people you love and are best at serving. So you already know them. And then the third thing is like, well, what is the, the way we could actually serve them best with the most leverage? What, what does that look like? And so that's really the third stage is really looking through your product and how can you create that epic value. So synergy um, is all these three things. And most businesses before they kind of roll out the red carpet for being product led, they forget that there's a lot that goes on here in order to do that. So the second thing I wanted to talk about is this concept of how you sell 
is just as important as what you sell. So this one took me a while to learn, but then every time I keep reading it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's true. Absolutely. So when it comes to the biggest differences between a sales led business versus a product led business, sales led businesses, they got three things going on. So they acquire people to their website. That's kind of the, the step one. And then step two usually looks something like this. You sign up for a demo and then we're going to monetize you. You, you get to go through, you get to go through our sales process. <laughs> and then the third process here is, okay, great. You monetize them. Um, then we're going to engage and give you value. So that's kind of the third step. So when it comes to the product led kind of style, um, it really looks like this. So we want to acquire people, same thing. Uh, but then the second step is all about engage. Engage people, provide value first, and then it's about monetization. So I'll share an example of what this looks like. Uh, two different stories. So I was recently signing up for this application called chess.com. And maybe you've used it. It's a great product-led experience. So I signed up for the free account. I played, uh, I think it was like five plus games. Uh, it was amazing. They were super competitive chess games. Um, and then after I played, I decided, you know what? I want some of the more advanced tips because I'm losing <laughs> and I paid. So that's a really good example. Uh, a sales ad example, I was recently looking for um, some data on companies that were acquired by private equity. So I, I signed up for or requested a free trial from this company called PitchBook. And so they had me, uh, the acquisition process looked good, but then I had to hop on a sales call. I had to go through this lengthy kind of demo to just understand the product. Um, I actually never ended up doing this step <laughs> and then they never got me to value. So that's an example of a sales that experience. Think about it for yourself. Uh, it's probably not too different. So when it comes back to the model we're working on here, there's really three things that go on in order to acquire the right people. We need to acquire the right people. We need to engage as kind of step two and do that really, really well. This is probably the most important step in a product-led business. That's why we wrote an additional book on product-led onboarding because it's so important. And then we have here, monetize, which of course you gotta have as a business, but that's really about growing customer value. So that's kind of the, the second stage um, and main point here. But the third and kind of last thing I wanna leave you with is there's a strategic order to scale. And so I wish I knew this earlier because when I first launched a free trial, we were focusing so much on our onboarding experience, but we were focusing on the wrong problem. We hadn't identified what should we give away for free. We hadn't identified um, who are the ideal users who should use this. We actually hadn't even changed our strategy. And so this is one of the most common problems that I see companies face again and again, where it's like, you just don't focus on the right stuff at the right time. And when you do that, it basically makes it way harder to scale. So as I kind of get rid of all <laughs> these things, I'll share with you exactly what this looks like for your business. And as I go through it, I want you to think about if you were to focus on one specific area, um, what would that look like for your business? So the very first thing that we start off with in the product led system is all about vision. So I was recently talking with the founder and he wasn't sure if like he should be product led or not. His goal was just to kind of maximize revenue. And so because that was the case and because he didn't have this like grandiose kind of vision, it was actually kind of murky. It's like, I could be product led, I could be sales led, um, which one makes the most sense? And I was like, I don't know, what's your vision? And because you didn't have that clarity, uh, it left things vague. And so I find if a founder doesn't have a great vision or isn't clear on it, um, making this decision of being product led or not is hard. But I'll give you another example. With Canva, it's like our mission is to help anyone design anything. 
and it's very clear. So how are you going to do that? How are you going to make that vision a reality? And it's like, well, being product led would actually be the best way to make that happen. So getting clear in your vision is super important. Um, the second kind of phase or step of this process is really understanding your user. So who is your ideal user? Um, so I'll share an example here. I was talking to a founder and he thought one of his ideal users was SaaS founders. It was a testimonial collection tool, made it easy to get a lot of testimonials. And so he wasn't quite sure like who it should be or not. And when we kind of dug into it, who had the most motivation, who was most excited to use the product, who was like, loved it just for what the product was today. Um, it was absolutely that uh, course creator user. And so since he doubled down on that user, uh, he's noticed the conversion rates uh, from free to paid for these users is higher. Uh, the conversion rate from visitor to sign up for these users is higher. And it allows him to actually scale way faster and just focusing on that user. Now that doesn't mean you have to like always go after that one user for the rest of your entire business. Sometimes it does, but other times it might just mean for the next year or next two years, you focus on this ideal user and you own it. So that's really the second phase is who is this product led model gonna be for? And once you identify your user, the next stage is, okay, what does that ideal model look like? Based on the challenges of that user, um, what do we need to give them away for free in order to really see a ton of value from this product? And that's where I think a lot of companies skip the foundational elements, these first three pieces, because it's like, wait, uh, if we just slap on a free trial to our existing product, give them everything, uh, it might actually be too much or it might not be enough. Um, those are both sides of the spectrum, but what do we need to get them to like a, a specific milestone in order to see value? So this is the first step. This is second. This is third. I want you to think about if you're to focus on one area, where would that be for your business? And so the second phase of all of this is really looking at how do we actually build your growth engine? So this is where we look at crafting your offer. This is the th fourth step. And when we look at your offer, we're really looking at, okay, how do we package that uh, free plan up? How do we kind of market it? How do we get people excited about that? And really set the right expectations that, hey, if you're gonna sign up, this is the value you're gonna get. And so the next part is really the experience. So thinking about what that looks like for your business, how do you make it effortless to sign up, effortless to get to value, effortless to upgrade? And that's easy to overlook, but actually doing it is one of the hardest pieces of all of this. And then the last piece is pricing. So when we look at pricing, how do we actually get people to upgrade quickly, but also more importantly, how do we really get people to um, sign up for a plan where like, as long as they're using the product and getting more value out of that, we can easily charge them more because our interests are aligned. If they don't get much value, we don't charge them much. If they get a ton of value, we charge them more. So thinking about that ideal pricing. And then the third phase is really all about how do we actually scale this out? And so this is where we look at your data. And that's a really important piece because if you're just making all your decisions based on gut, as far as where you should focus your team's time, you're gonna miss so many opportunities. So we really focus on identifying your ideal bottleneck. And then here we focus on your process. So what does that look like for your team? Uh, where are those like high impact experiments that you could roll out every single week? Is your entire team involved in this process? Are you launching more and more experiments? And then the last kind of phase of all of this is really just identifying where are the gaps on your existing team? So where are those um, A players that you could put them in the business and make a massive difference? For example, having somebody who's taking over the acquisition side of the business, having somebody who's an amazing VP lead the engagement side of the business, having somebody who's an amazing VP lead the monetization and scaling up and growing customer value. So that's an example of what this all looks like. So everything here has an order and you want to focus on the right areas at the right time to have the biggest impact in your business. So that's what I wanted to share with you today is the modern way to scale a SaaS business 
really comes down to these three things. You need synergy at the very core in order to make this all work. You need a profitable business, effortless customers, empowering product. In order to sell the way the modern customer wants to buy, you need to acquire people and then engage them. That's the biggest kind of missed step a lot of companies do. You can have a free trial, but if you don't engage people and get them to value, it doesn't matter. And then the last step is really monetize them. And then when it comes to that, actually rolling out to product in motion comes down to these nine core steps. So part of all of this um, in my mission is to really help 10x the number of product-led companies out there. So I wanna share something free for you that you can easily use in order to actually implement those nine components in your business. So if you go to productledsystem.com, you can get it all for free. We have made the DIY <laughs> do-it-yourself version of implementing PLG completely free just because I want more people to really see success with being product-led. So go ahead, download everything, go through all the resources, um, and I hope you enjoy uh, seeing the success of scaling the modern way. Thank you for listening.